Hey you guys, welcome to another beautiful Monday. Thank you for showing up for me and for yourself and providing space for me to speak about astrology. Uh, my name is Anton Evenings. Check me out on Instagram, Patreon. Those are my two favorite spots to check out. We'll go ahead and today we're going to talk about how to communicate. Self. The main things we use to communicate with each other are first off is the sun, moon, and rising. That's just flat out, that's just how you're gonna start off with every conversation you ever have with anyone. It's the it's the meat of the conversation. It's the hi, how's it going? Tell me about your day, tell me about how you feel today, tell me about how your friends are, tell me about your attitude. That's all sun, moon, and rising. That's all it is. So it's kind of shallow, but it's, it's scraping off the top. And it's really nice to know what you got on the top. Do you have, do you have a really clean cut? Beard, mustache? Are you a little scruffy? How is your perspective? Sun, moon, and rising, 24 7 all day. That's how that, that understanding is. And then, after you check out your sun, moon, and rising, then you go to Mercury, Venus, Mars. Mercury, Venus, and Mars is how you express outwards. How you express outwards. How you express your passions. How you express what your dreams are. How you express yourself. You could probably clump in Sun, Moon, Rising, Mercury, but we'll say Mercury, Venus, Mars are separate. We're just gonna go through, it just seems logical right now. <laughs> so excuse me is that if I'm trying to be a little logical these days. <laughs> so Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Mercury is how well do you communicate? How long can you keep a conversation on the same subject? How much does keeping the conversation on the same subject matter to you? For some people, they don't care. Some people really care. It's just this or that. But it's important to know, isn't it? When you're speaking to someone that you think is really cool, don't you kind of need to know if they're going to jump off ship? Me personally, I like to stay in one conversation until it gets resolved. Mercury and Libra. If, if someone changes a subject, I get a little uncomfortable if there hasn't been a, a developed a solution or a developed opinion or something. If the conversation jumps ship, if the conversation jumps ship, I'm gonna be like, okay, someone in here is is not on the same ship as me. <laughs> someone in here is thinking more emotionally. Most emotional driven people, they don't care about structure. They don't care about finding a solution. Yeah. The <clears throat> here's a fun fact. When it comes to studying things, or no, when it comes to maps, when it comes to mapping out locations, where to go, where you want to go, say you're traveling to wherever, or say you're, you're, you're packing your stuff and getting ready to go, it's more logical to have someone who's more structured mentally in a masculine way to section out things because it's more methodical and easy. Map on feminine energy has a tendency to want to jump shit, as it were. So there's gonna be this one thing you're doing and, and uh, someone with a more feminine aspect in their mind, mental, prospective, whatever, is gonna to wanna to be over here. And they'll literally go over there. It's a lot easier. So that's actually a really good trick to have. To be able to be in one spot and somewhere else at the same time and accomplish something there and here, it's really hard to do. That's really hard to do. But it's also really hard to stay in one spot until you're finished. Both tasks are not easy. Everybody has their own superpower. Mine just happens to be staying focused on the task at hand. And that's cool for me. So if there's
there's someone who doesn't keep the task at hand, I'm going to just assume, okay, if, if say you're in a group with friends, or if you're, you're, you're talking to someone and the subject just starts jumping, it's not a big deal, but at least know why it's doing that. So, if you know the reason, there's a rhyme for every reason. <laughs> Life leaves clues. There's clues everywhere. And it's fun to take up those clues and just take them apart. I was having this really funny conversation earlier about Vedic astrology. <laughs> what if, I'm not sure how people in India are, but what if people in India see masculine as a feminine character? What if it's that way? I don't know, but what if it is? If you know, please let me know. Post in the comments, PM me, I don't care, because I really want to know. Is it the same there? Are people there? Because maybe if they had our birth, birth chart set up over there, maybe they'd be like, what? Masculine is this way? Oh, no, no, no. Masculine people aren't that way. Oh, those people are wrong. They have the wrong gods. <laughs> you know what they are, right? And people in India have an Indian god. People in America have an American god. There's a big difference. <laughs> so their perspective, I'm sure, is different from ours. So I want to know about that, that perspective. I really do. I love listening to Indian everything. It's, it seems like they have more empowered energies there because they have a structured belief system. But I could be wrong. Maybe it's not structured. <laughs> but if it was, it would be nice. <laughs> you would think it would be because they have a tendency to be more, Indians have a tendency to be more in tune with different spiritual deities. There's Shiva, there's Ganesh, there's a lot of other deities. It's kind of eclectic. It's kind of cool. But then it makes you think, doesn't it? So, the people in the West, they have one God typically. Typically it's Christian. But you go over here, and they have a multiple gods. Men focus on one thing at a time. But women can focus on multiple things at a time. So you see, you see where I kind of get this perspective that if you go to India, if you start studying Vedic, then you're going to have masculine is feminine. And there's going to be a stern face you're going to see. Because, yeah, when I look at my sun sign in Fiddick, I'm, in, I'm a Libra, but I'm a Scorpio. So maybe those traits are, are different there. So that's just a really cool concept to think about. Definitely meditate on it. Let me know your opinion, because I'm so curious. Um, I'm definitely curious as to what other people think about that. I would love to start a debate on it. <laughs> Aside from that, So you have masculine with maps, they understand how to get from one place to another. Supposedly men have this GPS in their brain, supposedly, I think it sounds like bullshit to be honest. I don't think anyone has a GPS in their brain, that doesn't sound logical. But supposedly men are able to pinpoint locations better so than women, they can tell north from south and east to west better. I don't know. Sounds like bullshit, but it could be true. Because realistically, here and now is masculine. Everywhere else is feminine. I love you. That is a that is an omnipresent word, no? Love is something that's created with emotions. Emotions are something that's created from feminine energy, from grounded and emotional signs in the zodiac. But there's different kinds of loves, guys. Love can be aggressive. Love can be eccentric. Love can be confused. There's different kinds. And that's very important to understand. So there can be a masculine love, a feminine love. But they all come together and become one love. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope I've given you stuff to think about and meditate on.